Welcome to my lecture online. One of the most fascinating, interesting, and perplexing topics in all of physics is the concept of entropy. So let's look into it a little bit more so we understand what it is, and then we'll learn about the implications of entropy in the universe. Well, it turns out that we know from the laws of physics that the net heat flow, energy, will always go from hot to cold, not the other way around. So if there's a hot object in the room, there's a cold object in the room, heat will always travel from the hot to the cold object. It doesn't matter what the example is, it will always be that way. Heat flow from cold to hot would be as if you see water running uphill. That's something you will never see, and you will never see heat traveling, or at least net heat traveling, from where it's cold to where it's hot. Now it turns out that entropy is kind of a measure of available energy. Available energy means that, let's say you, you, you uh, compress a spring, well that puts potential energy in the spring, it, there's now available energy. That compressed spring could now do work. In the same context, heat can do work, at least available heat can do work. In other words, here's a schematic of the process, if you have heat available, hot available energy, it can flow to a cold place where the energy is no longer available, but during that process you can siphon off some of that heat and actually do work with it. Matter of fact, all of nature, all the whole universe is based on that principle. Things on the earth, they take advantage of the plentiful heat that we get from the sun and they utilize that in order to produce the energy in order to live and to do what they need to do. So all processes in the universe essentially exist because we have that heat flow. Let's take a look at some examples here. We have the sun, we have the earth. There's a net flow heat from the sun to the earth. Here we have a fire in a person that is cold. We have a net flow of heat from the fire to the person. Here we have a net flow heat from the flames on the stove to the water inside the pot. Here we have, let's say, two glasses of water one at 100 degrees Celsius, one at 0 degrees Celsius, and if you provide a heat path along which the heat can travel, the heat will travel from where it's hot to where it's cold until both glasses will be at the same temperature. Let's say at this point, since there's an equal amount of mass of water in the glasses, they will equalize or come to an equilibrium at 50 degrees centigrade. So heat will flow until the temperature is at equilibrium. We can look at mechanical examples, for example, a clock that works with weights. When we pull the weight to the top, the weight of the, of the weight inside the clock as it comes down will cause the clock to continue to run. Once the weight is all the way at the bottom, the clock will stop to run. Or we can wind up the clock if there's a spring mechanism in there to make the clock work, and as long as the spring isn't completely unfurled, the clock will continue to work. So everything in the universe works from the principle of available energy, which then will turn into unavailable energy. Well, that process produces an increase in the entropy in the universe. Anytime there's some heat flow from where it's hot to where it's cold, the entropy in the universe will go up. To make the heat flow in the opposite direction, that requires work. For example, we can actually make the heat from cold to hot. We do that with refrigerators, where we take cold air in the refrigerator, pull heat out of that to make it even colder, and put that heat into a warm kitchen. That requires work, and it turns out that more work is required than energy that's been made available. So the net result is that you waste more energy to do work than you get to be made available. So even though we can force the reverse of the process, it requires additional work to do so, and the net result is that the entropy of the universe will continue to go up. There's no possible mechanism by which we can make the entropy of the universe go down. So currently in the universe we have hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with billions upon billions of stars, and the stars, they're continually providing energy. Where it's hot, where the stars are, energy is being provided to the colder planets and moons, and if there's no planets and moons, just out into space where it's very, very cold. And that process continues, and as the process continues, entropy continues to go up, to go up, to go up. Eventually, we'll run out of available energy. 
there will be no more stars. Stars will continue to burn until they're completely burned out. They will stop shining. Slowly they will fade away from existence, so to speak, or at least from view, not from existence, because they'll just be cold cinders. But the available energy will slowly begin to disappear out of the universe. Of course, this will take a long time, many, many billions of years, but the process is continuing. More stars are born, more stars die, but eventually the amount of material to make new stars will, will run out and new stars will no longer be able to be made in the universe. As the existing stars continue to burn out, there will be less and less stars, less and less heat being transported to, from hot to cold. The entropy will continue to go up all this time, but eventually will reach a maximum entropy quantity for the universe where no longer any heat can be moved from where it's hot to where it's cold. All the stars will have burned out, all the available energy will be gone, it will all have flown from where it's available to where it's unavailable and that is called the heat death of the universe. What might even be a more unexplainable aspect of this whole thing is that in every process in the universe we see heat flowing from where it's hot to where it's cold continuously. In any location in the universe, in any house, on any place on the earth, anywhere in the universe, heat is always flowing from where it's hot to where it's cold and entropy continues to increase. That never stops. So, if there's no possible action that we can take to make that reverse, to reduce the entropy of the universe, the big question might be, how did the entropy of the universe start at such a low point? Who eventually wound up the universe? Because for the universe to continue to be able to provide energy as it is today, and it has for more than 13 billion years, and heat has always flown from where it's hot to where it's cold, never the other way around, entropy has never decreased, what is it that caused the universe to be set into motion at a low entropy so that it can slowly unwind and provide heat throughout the universe for countless billions of years? Essentially, who wound up the clock of the universe? It's hard to believe.